What's going on guys? My name is Logan with West Desert Shooter and today we are going to be reloading some 6mm Creedmoor. Now to be more specific, uh, what I'm loading for is actually my Uinta Precision Rifle UPR-10 sitting right here. Uh, it's an AR-10 platform and it is chambered in 6 Creedmoor. Now I do have a competition rifle that is also chambered in 6 Creedmoor. Um, but here's the difference. My competition rifle has a different firing pin diameter and can accept higher pressures. So any of the competition ammo I load up is pretty hot and the UPR uh, starts getting real borderline on uh, cutting the primers and really bad cratering. So I have to have a specific load for each gun, which is fine because I reload. It's no big deal. Factory ammo works on both of them. so. But let's talk about the load we're doing and the components we're using. Sorry guys, I got little primers that drop out and then go bounce around on my floors. Um, yeah, the components we're using. So the heart of this, Atlas Development Group Brass. If you guys go on ADG's website, I think it's atlasdg.com and then you buy any brass through there, if you use WDS10, you should get 10% off at checkout. So shout out to Atlas Development Group. Those guys are awesome. They've treated me really good. All of their components are super excellent and they work really well. What we're doing on this press right now is just decapping. We're not doing any function other than decapping. I want to pop all these primers out and then I want to take a look at the overall length on the brass. The press I'm using here is a mech marksman. Um, mech is kind of known for like shotgun reloading stuff and the marksman press is their single stage for metallic cartridge reloading. Um, it's really awesome. I like the big opening right here. It's super easy to get in and out of. Uh, it's got a floating shell holder design which has quite a lot of movement to it but it still sits on a flat surface so it's not gonna like wobble around by any means. It just helps it align with your die better. Jeez, that decapping pin's about to drive me crazy. Crank that up. And so the die that I'm using on top is a Lee decapping pin die, just a universal decapper. Um, super helpful to have around because you can decap anything with that one die, which is super nice. Really helps if you're trying to get like base to your shoulder headspace measurements, just to decap them real quick. That's the way I suggest doing it. You know what, on video, let's just knock out 20 rounds. I'll come back later and do more. All this brass has been fired a mixed amount of times. Uh, last time I reloaded them, primer pockets still felt really great. We'll talk about that here in a second. Let's grab our calipers. I'm gonna pop that comparator off. We'll zero out our calipers real quick. Zero, there we go. Let's check our overall length on this guy. 1.92, I bet that's like right on the trim length. Right, so I just checked the overall length on these. Uh, they're anywhere from 1.910 up to 1.920. Um, basically, I checked the reloading data online to Hodgden reloading data, great source, um, if you guys are looking for some info there. So check out Hodgden reloading data uh, because my old Hornady manual doesn't even have six creed more listed. Um, so it says the trim length in there is 1.910. And I know that typically you get a 10 thousandths window. So anything up to 1.92 shouldn't really be an issue. Um, but weirdly enough, I don't have a way to trim my six creed more. So here's a note to myself, get yourself a damn ploy, get yourself a damn way to trim your uh, six creed more brass here. Get on it, bro. I own two six Creedmoor rifles, so better get after that. Right, guys, at this point, I need to flip these over so that the case mounts are up. And then we're going to take these out into my garage. Just hit them with some Hornady one shot, because if I'm doing like case forming or the first time I'm sizing these, I'll usually use uh, Redding case wax. But one shot's just super quick. I've never had any issues with it. And then we're gonna get our sizing die set up, which I'm using a Redding Type S full length bushing die. 
So I am going to be bumping shoulders as well as resizing the neck. This does have a decapping pin in it, but like I say, I wanted to get that overall length measurement without worrying about if the primer is cratered or not. So one second, we're going to go blast these with Hornady one shot and we'll be right back. Okay. Got everything blasted with the Hornady one shot. This is what it looks like. It's an aerosol can spray some case lube on there. Super simple. You shake it up like a spray paint can before you use it. Like I say, I've never had a stuck case with it. I've had pretty good luck. So not saying you can't, I mean, anything's possible, right? So I want to show you guys me setting up my full length bushing die, like completely. I mean, I don't see a lot of info exactly like this out there. So hopefully this helps you guys out. Here we go. So we're going to go ahead and thread it into our press. Let's run the ram all the way to the top. Just contacts there. Yeah. So what I'm talking about is the die, as it threads down into it, eventually it comes in contact with your shell holder. So I just put it to where it touches the shell holder. Now what we're going to do is take our Hornady comparator, and the way this works is the shoulder on the cartridge comes up and touches the ring right here, and this ring sits about halfway down on the shoulder. So it's basically a datum line in the middle of your shoulder for telling you how long it is from the base of the case to the middle of the shoulder. That way you can tell how much you're resizing the shoulder on your brass, how much you're pushing that shoulder back. Now I always like to, like the most dead simple way to do this, throw in your calipers and then take your brass Put it in on the shoulder, wiggle it around a little bit, make sure it's like as close as it'll get, and then zero it on the shoulder. That way you can see exactly what this die is going to do. If it's negative, we're looking for a negative two thousandths. So that guy is zeroed out. I just want to check other brass, make sure that it is a similar headspace on there. Yeah, so that one's the same. So they're all looking really consistent. Now we're going to take this guy and run it up into our resizing die. And then we're going to go from our zero and see what this resizing die does to our shoulder. So let's run it down all the way up into there. Give it a good firm press on the bottom. Pull it back out. Very nice. Now from the feel of the press, I don't think it did much to the shoulder. I couldn't quite feel anything going on. But uh, let's see here. You can see the case neck is a little bit dirty and there's streaks running vertically on it. So I know that it went into the bushing sizing die. Let's see if it did anything to this. It's still completely zeroed out. So didn't even touch the shoulder. Now this is where you want to turn in your die just a little bit. And I mean like a little bit goes a long way, like a 16th of a turn there. We'll run that same piece up. Okay, now I feel like that was closer to doing something to the shoulder. We'll check her one more time. I'm gonna set that one aside because I don't like to work one piece of brass too much. So let's take this guy. This is a half thou longer than our original piece. So that's perfect. We're gonna tighten this up a little more. Again, like a 16th of a turn. Run this up in there. Good solid firm press on the bottom to really like get the same consistent result every time you size one of these. Okay, now it's negative half thou, so I moved that shoulder one thousandth. I'm gonna go a little bit more, which ironically is exactly where the ring comes in contact with the top of my press here. So my die was set up correctly for what I'm after. But that's how I do it, guys. I will size a piece of brass, check. Set a zero, size the piece of brass, come back and check what it did. If I have to do it more than like twice on one piece of brass, then I'll change which piece of brass I'm working with. Because every time you run it up into your press, it's expanding and then shrinking that neck down and then expanding it again. And that's what work hardens your brass and uh, can cause you issues down the road. So let's take our third piece, run it up into our press. Like, I'm putting. 30, 40 pounds down on that. Let's check it on our comparator. 
negative two and a half, sorry. Oh, now, now it's reading wrong because I flipped it upside down. Way to go. So at this point, before we just start partying on, we've got our rifle sitting right here. It's got our chamber that we need it to fit. So let's take a look. Make sure your gun's clear because it wouldn't work anyway. We're about to put an empty piece of brass in it. But also, if it were loaded, you couldn't put your brass in the chamber anyway. So this is like inherently a safe test. Go ahead and close your bolt. Had to get that extractor snapped over the uh, case head there. Easily falls up and down, like super easy. Pull this guy out. Ah! There she went flying. So this thing fits in our chamber. Let's try the first three pieces we resized. No resistance, it's gonna fly out. And then the last piece, this is an important step. Uh, definitely check in the chamber of your rifle to make sure your brass fits. So number one indicator, if your brass doesn't fit, your bolt will not be able to lower. Number two indicator that it's a little too snug still is if you can like feel pressure and it's not operating as smoothly as it normally does on your downstroke. Like if it doesn't just freely close like it normally feels like on your gun, um, you wanna bump your brass a little bit more. But at this point, I didn't feel any resistance at all, which tells me there's a little bit of a window between the shoulder and the chamber of this rifle, which is exactly what we want. So this is like ready for a field match. So if there's a little dust in there, it'll still work. Okay, um, another little hot tip I got. As you go through and do this, I always flip over my cases upside down so that uh, I know which part of the process I'm on. So let's go ahead and start burning through these guys, resizing them. Nice firm press down. And then every three or four pieces, or however often you want, you can check them all. Um, I will check the headspace on these, make sure they're still hitting that negative two thou. You'll see some variation, typically within a thousandth either way. So like right here. Yep, exactly, negative one thousandth, but that's fine. I trust that that will work because I know that it will. So just cruise along guys. And like I say, it, you can see some variations. Some may form a little more, meaning it's a larger negative number, negative three thou. Um, it depends on if the brass is like brand new versus fired a few times. After you resize those with the same setting on your die, you will likely see different results. Similar results, but a little bit different. One note I want to throw in here real quick. Um, if you guys have subscribed more recently, like honestly within the last year and a half, two years, um, I had a ton of old reloading content where I feel like I've covered most reloading topics that I feel comfortable talking about. But uh, if you guys are interested in more reloading videos, I have a reloading playlist and it's the older videos. So you kind of got to go back a little bit, but I mean, the. The information's still good, the video work may not be as pretty, but uh, the information there is awesome. So I have covered a lot of the reloading stuff out there, and so it feels a little redundant to come back and talk about it all again, but I wanna make sure you guys know that, and honestly, I needed to make some Six Creed more, so whatever, we'll turn the cameras on. Okay, at this point, let's go ahead and chamfer and deburr our case mouths just a touch, just to clean them up because these were ejected out in the field. And again, we'll flip over the cases as we go. Just a quick little one, two. And then after this, we're just gonna move on to priming. Now, one thing I do wanna speak on um, is equipment for reloading. I started out with a Lee reloading kit. It's a great way to get going. Um, and then over time, you just upgrade the shortcomings in your setup. So like, I ended up with a different primer here. I used to prime on my Lee press. I've upgraded my press because uh, 
produces a little more concentric ammo. You can see this big green monster sitting right here, and that guy automatically throws powder charges to the weight that you want. And with checking it on my old reloading scale, I trust this thing now. I've done a couple hundred rounds with it, and it seems like it's dead on every time. It, at least, it, it may not throw perfect every time, but it'll tell you if it didn't throw perfect. It'll tell you if you're a tenth over or whatever, which most of the time I just say whatever and shoot the damn things. So, as you can see, they all got their pretty little uh, rings right around the mouth of the case there. So those are ready to have a bullet seated into them. Now it's time to start priming. Hold your primers up, put the tray on it, flip it upside down. There you go, 20 primers. Here, this is the Frankfurt Arsenal uh, Universal Hand Primer. What's cool about this, guys, it's got this little dial back here, and that will dial in exactly how deep it seats your primers. So if you're particular about how deep you're seating your primers, this is a great way to go. This thing is solid metal, man. It's super stout. I don't think I'll ever replace this in my life. And then you got your little tray here. It's got interchangeable shell holders up here. Well, my bad guys, uh, there is a large and a small priming arm in here, and then it's got this little spring-loaded thumb guy. Those are interchangeable, and apparently there's a window on the back. I had the small rifle primer uh, inside of here, and the window will not let large rifle primers through, which is good. That's a safety function um, so that you don't end up jamming up your primers later. So uh, make sure you change that if you're working with one of these. <laughs> okay, now I always point this away from my face. I don't want to catch an exploding primer in the face. Um, if you guys have ever just primed a piece of brass and taken a shot, it sounds like a firecracker going off. Like there's a lot of charge just in the primer. So uh, definitely not something to play with. These things are pretty serious. I've heard of people setting off primers in their press. Somehow I, I think somebody was seeding a bullet once and they're uh, case was fully charged and it like blew up in the reloading room. So bad stuff there. You got to be careful Because let's be honest we're playing with explosives and a lot of us are just Jackass rednecks doing it in our garage or little spare room. We got so I'm included in that list by the way Your right forearm is gonna look all super swole and pumped and badass and then your left one is gonna be sitting there all sad looking talking about priming let's talk about funnels real quick because we're about to start throwing powder charges you got a universal funnel on the back side it goes way large and it basically is a funnel down to the smaller caliber case neck sizes then there are caliber specific funnels um, some of them are super fancy like this one anodized aluminum super nice and the powder flows through these extremely well the awesome part about the aluminum funnels that are caliber specific, I mean, they don't have to be aluminum, they can be 3D printed, uh, is when you set them on top of your case mouth, it will hold it like perfectly straight on top of the cases. Now I have this for 7 mil 22 cal, but I don't have one for 6 mil, which is really what the majority of my rifles are now these days. So I need to step up my game. I need to get a case trimmer. I need to get one of these guys in 6 mil. But if you've ever wondered if they're worth it, they are really nice. Um, I would say that they are, depending on how much you reload. If you're reloading once or twice a month or more, definitely get yourself a nice funnel, especially if you, re you reload a lot of a single caliber. Um, but since I have known, uh, since I don't have one for my six mils, I just use a little universal guy like this. And I use this basically to mark where I am loading as I go. So I will throw a powder charge into this guy, and then I will move it to the next case before I start messing with anything else. I usually start top left, work my way down, and then right. So let's get the RCBS Charge Master Lite fired up. I do have some old load data cards. I picked these up from the Reloaders Network. If you guys haven't been there and you're interested in reloading, definitely check out the Reloaders Network. I have a page there as well where you can see some exclusive content that's not on YouTube. Uh, because YouTube sucks. So, six Creedmoor H4350 Federal Primer, new ADG. Um, this was my deer hunting load last year, so I kind of cranked up the pressure a little bit. So here's our what we're looking for right now. H4350. I charged them with 40 and a half grains. I did test 41 grains, 
that's really hot. I'm actually gonna drop down to 40 grains just to keep it nice and simple. So let's punch in 40 grains and then go for it. Now, picking up an RCBS Charge Master Lite. Um, in my experience, it has not made it, it has not made my reloading faster. It's made my reloading easier. I sit here while that thing does the work. If you want to make it faster, you're going to have to purchase two of these. So just saying, like for throwing it out of my little Lee like powder measure thing um, and then trickling it up, I could keep pace with this thing. If I had two of these, I could kick my own ass. So I suggest getting two of these if you want speed. Now, unfortunately, they're not inexpensive, so I know that that might not be possible for everybody. It's not even possible for me. I've only got one. But uh, in the future, I definitely want to pick up two because when you're sitting there making 100 rounds for a precision rifle match, um, a little more speed goes a long way. You're sitting here for quite a while while this thing trickles out. Its trickling is pretty slow to me. I think it could go a little quicker. Um, like right now it's 39.8 grains. 39.9 grains. And it's got a stable and it's real slow on the last tenth. It just moves. It's going to beep at us when it's done. And we're just waiting for like two little kernels to fall out. See? So like three tenths of a grain took so long, whereas if I'm trickling that by hand, I could definitely get that done faster. So as you noticed, I moved my funnel to the second piece, dump this guy in there. I always tap it to make sure any clogged powder down on the uh, choke point has made it into the case. Move that to case number three before I put the pan back on the scale. Because what's annoying, it does take a second to charge this, and if you double charge your case, You've ruined two charges, and then you get to redo two more, which is just total waste of time. So I do have this thing set up on auto mode, meaning that once it has, once I take the pan off the scale, dump out a charge, and I put the empty pan back on, it knows that it's zeroed out, it has the pan back on the scale. So it will automatically throw once you get it out to zero. So that's super convenient, it's faster, I don't have to sit there. You can put it into manual mode where it will only throw when you tell it to. So let's do something real quick. We're just gonna make sure this pan is still zeroed out. So cancel, now it's gone into manual mode, and then you push zero. So now the, the uh, tray here is zeroed out. Then we're going to zero it again with the pan on and then you just hit go, and it'll distribute 40 grains that we're looking for. I do that every few rounds just to make sure that my pan is zeroed and then it's throwing consistent charges that are actually 40 grains. As you can see here, just a nice slow trickle. I'm not going to torture you guys with any more of these. Just wanted to kind of show you some of the features on this. So yeah, grab that guy. Oh, ooh, almost double charged. It didn't move my uh, funnel like I was supposed to. Then we'll start talking about seeding while I'm charging more cases. All right, guys, the seeding die we're going to be using is a Redding Competition Micrometer seeding die. This thing is super awesome. I really like these seeding dies. Um, it's got a spring-loaded collar in here. I have a video that I recently did on different seeding dies, and this is absolutely what I would suggest if you're looking for the utmost precision and accuracy in seeding, unless you're gonna go all the way to like an Arbor Press, which is probably like a superior way to go, but those are like real serious dies and most people don't get into that stuff. Sorry, just had to dump this charge. So that is, like I say, it's this powder charger makes things easier, not necessarily faster. So here's my recommendation on how to set up your seating die. So check the overall length on a dummy cartridge that you have or a loaded cartridge that you have. This one's 2.78, I want 2.77 is what my old reloading notes say. So nice and easy. Okay, it feels like, yeah. That right there is where the seating stem came in contact with this old bullet. So let's grab a, oh, gotta dump my charge here. 
Okay, so we're gonna run a test. We got our charged case. Always look down in here and make sure this case is charged. Otherwise you get a squib. I've gotten in a good habit of that. I always check my powder charge before I set it into the press. Take your boat tail bullet right there and then we're gonna run it up into our seating die. And this is just a test. We just wanna see where this is going to seat it to. Nice firm press all the way down so you get a consistent seating length. And then we're gonna take our calipers. Like I say, I want 2.770. 2.774 so with these different because this one's just a hollow point uh, the hollow point is not always like super even uh, 2.774 that thing should be like perfect for the gun so I like exactly where it's set up we're not even going to touch it we're not going to adjust it obviously it's got micrometer marks so if you had to adjust it in or out you can see the difference that it's making if you don't have something this fancy or if you don't have a dummy round to start with Start with small seating adjustments, small uh, adjustments, and then just kind of work your way in there. Uh, hopefully have a bullet puller because you may end up needing that. Um, the kind I use, just a kinetic little hammer, smack it against something solid, the kinetic energy pulls the bullet out of the case. Super simple, super safe, never had any issues with using it. So yeah, we'll seat a couple more. I gotta dump my charge. Sorry guys, anytime I'm not dumping my charge, it's just kind of wasting time. So let's see one more of these guys. Again, took a look inside there, made sure it had powder in it. And then nice and easy. I usually try and slowly engage it into the seating die. I don't like to just jam it in there because if something's off, I don't want to like ruin the brass prep or anything like that. Now let's check our overall length. 2.773 so yeah I could go in three thousandths if I really wanted to I know that the max mag length is 2.810 that's not going to be an issue with this length so we'll go ahead and throw that in there and this is the length that we're going to go with so the mech press has a little area up top a little storage bin super convenient just throw some projectiles in there and then you can sit here and start seating away Nice and easy. It's got that floating shell holder design, which helps it line up with your seating uh, seating die here. So you know, super straight, consistent ammo from the Mech Marksman Press. Final example. Go ahead and seat it in there. Good firm press on the bottom. And there we go, guys. We've gone from like bare brass, deprimed it, gone ahead and reprimed it, checked our overall length chamfered and deburred the case neck, resized it, checked our headspace, pushed it back two thousandths, verified in the rifle, got our overall length set up where we're looking for it, and now we have a cartridge that is ready to go to the range with a safe pressure for my rifle. Well, awesome guys, I hope this answered some of your questions you may have had about reloading six millimeter Creedmoor, and quite honestly, this process applies to every bottleneck precision rifle cartridge. So like 6.5 Creedmoor, 243 Winchester, whatever you're after, the whole process applies. It's just like the specific load data was specific to this video. Now when I first started reloading, I was so into the details and I was just trying to get every one of my rifles to shoot like as absolutely best I could, which is a great goal. However, eventually I got burned out on that. At this point, I really just like to load and go shoot my damn gun. Um, honestly, most of the time, most loads work really well, better than most factory ammo. Yes, absolutely get out there, do some pressure testing, see where you can push it up to in a safe level, and then try and find what shoots best for your rifle. You can play with seating depths and do all that, but ultimately, don't forget to just enjoy shooting your gun. I got to a point where I couldn't even like go shoot long range because I was convinced that my loads weren't ready to go shoot far, and at this point, I'll just slap a charge in here, I'll go chronograph it, and go out and shoot far. I really don't care as much anymore, and I'm really enjoying shooting like that more than I used to. So that's my little tip for you guys. I hope this video didn't go on too long for you guys. I Like I mentioned, I hope it helped you out in some way, and whether it didn't, good on you for watching reloading videos to see if you pick up little tips and tricks here and there. I still watch reloading videos despite the fact that I've been reloading for a little while, and even the point that I make reloading videos to share, it's because I enjoy watching reloading videos. So I'm putting out what I enjoy consuming, so hopefully it's a nice little return out there into the market. 
My name is Logan with West Desert Shooter. There are affiliate links down below. If you guys click anything, through, if you guys purchase anything through those links, it helps support the channel, which greatly helps because currently I'm in between jobs. I'm trying to go full time on YouTube and we will see how that turns out. But uh, yeah, any support there is greatly appreciated, guys. Hope you enjoy the content. We will see you out of the range in the next one.